Hi everyone, it's Shannon, and today I have 25 super easy and super cute Valentine's Day DIYs to share with you. And thank you so much for joining me here on my channel, The Daily DIYer. First up is this wooden style heart crate. I'm gonna be using two wooden hearts from Dollar Tree along with paint stir sticks, which I'll link down in the description box below. You can find them on Amazon. I started by figuring up about how long I wanted my crate to be. Mine I'm cutting down to about four inches long using my handsaw and miter box. I did end up cutting out six lengths of the paint stir sticks total. I went ahead and sanded down all of my wood pieces first to get any of the splinters and unevenness off and took my traditional burnt umber acrylic paint and painted everything with the same color, but of course you can get creative here and make your crate whatever color matches your Valentine's Day decor. Then it was time to assemble everything after it was dry. I'm just using my hot glue and adding three of the paint sticks to the bottom of the heart on each side. Now I decided to add a little bit of extra detail using this white chalk marker. I'll link these down in the description box below too. You can find them on Amazon. These are my favorite as they have a great finish on your wood pr projects. And then to add a little extra detail, I'm adding some Dollar Tree green moss to the inside, but you could put candy in here or flowers, whatever matches your home's decor. Next is this beaded farmhouse style heart wreath. I'm starting with a wreath form from Dollar Tree as well as these half wooden beads. I'll link the beads down in the description box below as well. You can find them on Amazon for pretty inexpensive. What I'm doing here is taking some wire cutters and cutting out the smaller sized heart, but you could actually create three wreaths with this as there are three different sized hearts. Then I popped off any of the extra little metal pieces and made sure it would lay flat. Now to add my beads to the heart form, I'm using some hot glue and I have this green mat that is protecting my surface. I'll link that down below too. So I'm just adding hot glue onto the top of the wreath form and placing those half beads on top. And I did that all the way around the entire heart. And then to make sure that they would stay in place, I actually flipped the wreath over onto the back and added even more hot glue to make sure that all the beads had some extra support. And to make this wreath hangable, I'm just creating a loop with some ribbon and tying a knot. I flipped the wreath over to the back and just hot glued it right onto the point of the heart. This love note sign is a fun way to leave special messages to your loved ones. I'm starting with a wooden heart shape from Dollar Tree and painting the entire thing with the color flamenco red that is by the brand Apple Barrel that you can even find at Walmart. Again, I'm using my white chalk marker to add some detail around the edges with just some dots and dashes to add a decorative trim. And then in the left corner, I wrote the word love notes. These clothespins are also from Dollar Tree. They are the medium sized ones that you can find in their craft section. I just sort of randomly placed them around the heart and then used some hot glue to keep them in place. And last, I added some ribbon to the top through the holes that were already in the heart to make it hangable. Today's emoji is of course a heart, so leave me your favorite colored heart emoji down in the comment section below. If you don't have emojis, you can just leave the word love. Thank you. 
This mason jar shelf decor piece is so fun to make. I'm starting with a Christmas style MDF mason jar. I'm just going to be using the back so I needed to take the tags off of it first. So I'm using a hair dryer to heat it up and that melts the adhesive on the back to where you can easily peel those stickers right off. I also like to sand it down a little bit to get all the extra adhesives off. Then I'm coming in with some light pink chalk paint and painting the entire thing. Then I decided I was going to give mine a gray lid. So I painted that top section and the sides with some gray chalk paint. And then I also wanted to add lots of fun details using my acrylic markers. I'll link these down in the description box below too. So I added some black little details to the lid and also the signs, the sides to really define the look of the mason jar. I am also coming in with my hair dryer in between different colors to make sure that I don't smudge anything or mix the colors up. Once I had some of the fun details of my mason jar finished, I came in with my white chalk marker and added some highlights and some extra little details. I also added some red and white twine tied around the top of the lid to add that extra little touch of special detail. Now to make some farmhouse style books. These are Christmas books from Dollar Tree that I actually used at Christmas time. I just unwrapped them and decided to change them over and reuse them for Valentine's Day. For the covers, I'm using some white cardstock cut down to size so they will wrap around the outsides and kind of create a cover for the fronts of the books. Once I had all three books covered, I am embellishing with some burlap style ribbon that had a cute red thread through it to give it that Valentine's Day look. I also used some hot glue to keep those in place. And then on top of that, I added some red and white twisted yarn from Christmas, but it works great for Valentine's Day too. And then I used a red acrylic marker to write I love you up the spines of each book. This next one is more of a tip than a DIY. You can actually take the scarves that are from Dollar Tree and use them as a pillow embellishment. So this is actually an infinity scarf. So I did have to cut it apart and then I just wrapped it around the sides of one of my couch pillows and tied a bow in the middle along with a knot and cut off the tails so that it would kind of all blend well and then just spread out the edges so that it covered more of the pillow and it was as simple as that. This is probably my favorite DIY of this video. It is a set of heart arrows using some picks from Dollar Tree along with some dowel rods and some pink felt. I started by painting the dowel rods with my traditional burnt umber acrylic paint. I did three of these. You can of course make however many you'd like. Then I took the picks out of these glitter styrofoam hearts. I used my scissors to poke a little hole in the top of the heart, added some hot glue, and then inserted a dowel rod into the end. 
And then to create the feathers that will go at the other end, I'll be using that pink felt. I cut out three rectangle shapes and then cut the edges at a angle and then cut little slits up the sides to create that feathered look. Next, I used my hot glue and crossed all of the dowel rods at a center point, glued them all together, and used some twine to help hold them in place. And then I used a satin red bow from a previous project to help cover up that glue. Now to make a love potion bottle. I'm pretty much obsessed with these cute new bottles that are at Dollar Tree. They start out as clear glass, but we're gonna be using the Krylon Looking Glass spray paint to cover the entire thing. And then that will give it a very pretty and high-end style look, giving it that mirrored finish. So I spray painted the entire thing, leaving the lid on. And once it was dry, I started creating a little tag that we can hang off to the side that says Love Potion. The tag is actually from Dollar Tree as well. I use my chalk markers for this again. And what I like about this project is I can actually just remove this tag after the holiday and use this bottle for other holidays or other decorative pieces in our home. Next is a simple way to create a wall hanging using some wooden hearts from Dollar Tree and another dowel rod. I have two colors of paint, pink and my traditional burnt umber in brown. I painted all of the hearts pink and my dowel rod with the brown. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to write on these hearts, so I left them plain, but let me know down in the description box below or the comment section below what you would write on your hearts or how you would decorate them. I would love to hear your ideas. To put this all together, I'm using my red and white twine tied from the hearts to the dowel rod. I'll link this down in the description box below as well. And then for the top to hang it from the wall, I'm using some red and white gingham ribbon. Now to create these cute love topiaries, the picks came from the same bag as our hearts from our arrow project before. We're also going to be using some wooden boxes that you can find at Dollar Tree. I'm taking my traditional burnt umber acrylic paint and painting out the boxes and then I'll be filling the boxes with some styrofoam that you can find at Dollar Tree as well. Now you can just go ahead and pop those picks right down into your styrofoam. I'm going to be using the green moss from Dollar Tree to cover up the styrofoam so you don't see that.
I have always wanted to try making one of these candy heart wreaths and I found all of the supplies at Dollar Tree from the candy to the wreath. I am going to go ahead and paint the green wreath with the light pink paint because I knew we weren't going to be able to cover the entire inch, every inch of this wreath with the candy hearts. So any spot that might be showing through, I wanted it to kind of have that pastel look. So what I did is just took my time and went around the wreath adding candy hearts with my hot glue. So I'd add a little bit of hot glue here and there, add the candy hearts in and kind of work, worked my way all the way around the wreath. It kind of sounds like a tedious process, but it really did not take very long at all. And it is so fun and cute to make. It did take me about three bags of candy for this size wreath. So as you can see, I did not do the back so it would sit flush against the wall. It doesn't take as long if you don't do the back as well. And then I just tied some ribbon around the top, looped it and tied a knot so it could hang. I am so obsessed with these cute yarn hearts. I wanna make a ton of these and make a garland, but I'm starting with the same wooden tags from Dollar Tree and also their yarn. I'm taking advantage of the hole that is in the tags and tying the yarn into a knot so that way my tail doesn't come loose. And I'm just wrapping and wrapping the yarn around the heart until all of the wood was covered and not showing. And then I tied a knot on the back of the heart and then trimmed the tail with my scissors. Now to make another cute shelf decor piece, starting with this wooden kind of house shape from Dollar Tree. It had these big flowers on the front, so I removed those first, but again, we're gonna flip this over and use the back. So I needed to get the tags and stickers off the back, so I'm using my hair dryer again to loosen up the adhesives and sand it down smooth before I went in and started Kind of drawing out my design i knew i wanted windows and a door and what i did first was actually use a paint marker for this um, but it didn't quite look dark enough so then i came in with my white chalk paint and did my um, basic coverage using chalk paint instead of the marker So the white chalk paint gave me much better coverage and then I decided I wanted a red door on this cute house. So I'm using my flamenco red and a paintbrush to add that. Once that was completely dry, then I came in and added a white heart to the front door and I used my Sharpie marker to write love lives here off to the side. I wish I had a black paint pen for this instead so I could have gotten a little bit better wording instead of this fine tip on the sharpie but it worked in the moment and then like I said added that cute little white heart to the front door.
These moss hearts could not be more simple. Of course, I'm starting with these little moss balls that you can find at Dollar Tree. And basically what I'm going to be doing is taking a paintbrush and using it to manipulate the shape of the styrofoam that's underneath it. So I created sort of that top um, dip for the top of the heart and then pinched the bottom to where it kind of had a point. You can use a paintbrush like I did for this or a pencil or even a dowel rod, something that's kind of thin that you can manipulate the styrofoam with. We always usually count down the days until Christmas, but it's fun to also count down the days until Valentine's Day. So to do that, we're gonna be using this wooden heart frame from Dollar Tree. I wanted mine to have a farmhousey look, so I started by painting my frame with gray paint first, and then the heart insert I painted with a chalkboard paint. And then once that layer was dry, I used my white chalk paint and came in and dry brushed on the, that layer of paint, giving it that weathered wood look. You'll also need to add a couple layers of the chalkboard paint to your heart. Now I am adding a vinyl decal off to the side that says days until Valentine's Day, but of course you could also use a marker and write this in yourself too. This is one of my favorite wreaths that I've made. I'm actually just using a book from Dollar Tree and cutting out lots and lots and lots of pages from this big book. I'm also using a wreath form from Dollar Tree as well. So once I had lots of pages cut out, I'm actually using half of a sheet per um, section that we're gonna be gluing on. So you can see here, I kind of tilted mine into a diamond shape and then folded the corners in. It kind of looks like a necktie shape, but I wanted that point and that is what is going to be going around our wreath. So you can see here, I'm pointing out where the middle of the wreath is. I wanted that point really defined in the front. So what I'm doing is making sure that is centered, wrapping it around the top, and then we're gonna hot glue this piece in place by creating a flap in the back and then also gluing the point down to the front. Okay. 
So now basically we need to create lots of these necktie shapes. So like I said again, we start with a diamond shape, we fold it in the right and left corners, and we're gonna flip it over to the front so the folds were, will be in the back. Once you have several of these kind of already prepped and ready to go, we're gonna fold the top corner under, and then we're going to hot glue those down to that center point. So that center one we started with is actually kind of gonna be a basis, and I'm adding hot glue to each one of those book pages and adding them underneath the one in front of it and basically it's just a layering technique sometimes i had to flip the wreath over to the back side to make sure that it was staying attached to the wreath form so you just continue with this process until you have your heart shape all made out of those book pages actually saw a set similar to this on Pinterest and knew I could recreate it using items from Dollar Tree. So I'm starting with some of their white foam board and I'm cutting down two rectangle shapes, both the same size. So I kind of just started by guessing about the size that I wanted. So my first triangles were a little bit too big and I had to go back down and uh, cut them down a little bit more. But I'm using a X-Acto knife to cut my foam board pieces out. It kind of gave me a nice clean edge. But you can see my X here is a little bit too thick. So I had to come back in and remove some of the sides to make them skinnier. And then it was on to the process of creating that X that was going to look like wood. So we're gonna give this a faux wood look, starting with painting the styro or the, the foam with this yellow color. It's the color King's Gold by Apple Barrel. And I know it sounds kind of weird to paint yellow when you're going for a wood look, but you'll see why I'm doing that here in just a little bit. While that paint dried, I used my green moss from Dollar Tree and covered one of their styrofoam wreath forms with it using my hot glue. Now to work some magic to make this foam look like wood, I'm using my traditional burnt umber acrylic paint and a paintbrush that has bristles to create a sort of uh, wood grain look. So what I'm doing is just brushing this on in the same direction, but I'm letting some of that yellow show through. So it kind of looks like wood bark. So I just did that and then came back in with a wet paper towel and wiped some of it off. We're gonna do that one more time, giving it one more layer after this coat dries.
So now that they're dry, you can see we have much more of a wood grain type look. I'm gonna be using my hot glue to glue them into place to give us that X shape and also some jute to tie around the middle to give it more of a farmhouse look. and then you can just set your pieces next to each other so they have that XO kind of look. I really love the look of this because it's kind of a non-traditional way to get a beautiful look and a subtle touch of Valentine's Day versus the traditional pinks and reds. This wreath really only costs about $2 because we're going to be using one pack of white heart doilies and one wreath form from Dollar Tree. And to get started, we're going to actually fold the bottom point of our heart doilies and add a staple to the bottom. Now you wanna go ahead and repeat this process for 24 hearts total. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip our wreath form upside down and work on the inside ring first. We're gonna be taking the stapled point of our hearts, pulling it over that inside ring and using some hot glue to keep it in place. You want to add two hearts per section that are broke up within this wreath and then you're going to continue around until you have 12 hearts around that center ring. Now we're gonna work on the very outer ring of our wreath, creating a second layer. We're gonna repeat the process of pulling the point of our heart through the wreath and pulling it over the top of the ring and hot gluing it down into place. Again, you will add two hearts per section and you will have 12 hearts total all the way around the outside.
It's always still super cold here during the February months, so having a coffee mug or hot cocoa mug for the season is super fun. This red mug is from Dollar Tree and I'm adding a vinyl decal onto the front. I use the font The Skinny and Matte Black Oracle number 651 vinyl for this. If you don't have a vinyl machine, you can also use a black marker or a white marker if it's going to be used for decorative purposes. Uh, the vinyl definitely makes it a usable mug though and it's just super easy and a super quick and easy way to create some kitchen Valentine's Day decor. To create your own Hugs and Kisses Mason jars, you can find these jars at Dollar Tree. And basically all I did was take the top lids off and I made sure the insides were clean since I was gonna be putting some candy on the inside. And I took the mason jar lids apart. One I painted with my pink chalk paint and the other one I painted with my red chalk paint. On the fronts, once, well actually once they were dry, popped those lids right back onto the jars. And then again, added some vinyl decals to the front, one that says hugs, one that says kisses. But again, you can use a marker for this as well. I love this subtle touch of Valentine's Day in my traditional farmhouse decor. This bottle is from Dollar Tree, of course. So what I did is I just tied some jute around the top and tied a knot. I also found these cute wooden stickers um, at Dollar Tree as well. I hot glued one of those onto the knot of the jute and then added another decal to the front that said Cupid on it. This is another way to use the wooden hearts from Dollar Tree. This one has a very farmhousey look and I'm excited to show you how I created the flowers on the front. But first I painted out this wooden sign with my gray chalk paint and then gave it that weathered wood look coming back in with some white chalk paint over the top of it to rough it up. So I wanted to add that jute on first. I hot glued it and tied it into place. And I wanted to add those fabric flowers over the top. To, so to create those, I'm using a scarf from Dollar Tree and a t-shirt from Dollar Tree. The base is just regular felt. I started by tying a knot in the end of the fabric and then cutting the tail off. You're gonna take your hot glue and hot glue it onto a spot on your felt and then wind it around that knot, twisting it as you go and hot gluing it down into place.
once you've twisted it and have your flower the size you want it you just want to cut your tail off and make sure the end is hot glued down into place and then you take your scissors and cut the flower out of your felt so this is a quick look at one of them using a t-shirt and the next one i'll show you how one turns out by using a scarf from dollar tree So I made three flowers for this one and hot glued them down into place and then added another decal to the front that says be mine. So I usually always see these heart dishes at Dollar Tree and this is kind of a fun different way to create a decorative piece with it instead of just using it for a candy dish. Um, what I'm doing is just painting the entire back with my pink chalk paint, excuse the blurriness here, um, and gave it two coats, let it dry, and we're basically going to make a cute little uh, shelf decorative piece. Um, and so the inside there, I actually tilted it on its side and then added a love decal to the inside. Um, again, you could use a marker for this instead. And it just kind of made a cute, pretty little decorative piece. These Valentine's Day blocks, you could really get creative with and use them for so many different things. But these are just toy wooden blocks from Dollar Tree that I painted with my gray chalk paint first and then gave them my weathered wood technique using white chalk paint, dry brushed on to the front. But you could paint yours the traditional Valentine's Day colors too, or you could even paint these completely different colors for different holidays and seasons but I really love this neutral farmhouse look so I feel like we could turn these over and write different things on them for um, different holidays too and keep them neutral but once I had all of them painted and they were dried I decided to write X's and O's on the fronts and then I also flipped them over and wrote love on some of them so that they could be used in different ways. Love definitely comes to mind when I see this beautiful faux chalkboard. The frame is made out of rulers from Dollar Tree. I used my miter box and hand saw to cut off the ends of the rulers that had the holes in them.
all four of my rulers were cut down to the same length. I took them over to my black foam board and laid them out, traced around them so that I could cut down the foam board to the right size. You want to make sure your rulers are flipped to the smooth edge, not the edge that has the little groove on it. And we're going to be using the traditional burnt umber acrylic paint to paint these so they have a wood look. Now we're going to glue our frame pieces all the way around the edges. Let your glue dry all the way. And then you'll see when I tilt this up, we still have a white edge and you can see that foam. So what we wanna do is actually take our uh, brown paint again and go all the way around the edges to hide that. Now you can create whatever design onto your chalkboard that you want. This is obviously not a traditional chalkboard, so whatever you do on here will be permanent. But I just created a heart for Valentine's Day and wrote love in the center. Once your paint pen ink has dried, what I like to do is come in with traditional ink or traditional chalk that you can actually erase and go over the whole entire thing. It's going to kind of give it an aged look like the chalkboard has been used for a while. And then you can erase that and it'll still leave some of that chalk behind and give you a more authentic look. Give this video a thumbs up if you made it all the way to the end and let me know down in the comments below which one of these 25 Valentine's Day DIYs was your favorite. I'll have more Valentine's Day projects popping up on your screen that you can check out next and please subscribe for weekly inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.